In this video, we're harvesting and gathering nature materials to create miniature trees and ground covering materials. Hello and welcome to another video tutorial here on the channel. We're celebrating today because of you. Our viewers just became 100,000. Yeah, actually 100,000 subscribing viewers. <laughs> so if you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe to the channel and we'll uh, increase even more. You know, I, I was thinking about it the other day and you know, it wasn't all that long since since I had a I kind of had a celebration video for uh, reaching 100 subscribers and you know <laughs> feels like yesterday and uh, yeah obviously time is uh, moving fast uh, when you have fun and model railroad is great fun so no matter time is passing fast here today we're gonna do something I'm typically doing in the autumns and the late autumn I'm harvesting and collecting gathering uh, materials uh, from my garden and from the neighborhood uh, which I can use for modeling purposes during the winter in my area the raspberry grows everywhere in the garden some places is uh, good but uh, some are not so every autumn we remove a lot of these raspberry bushes and I found that its root is very useful to create magic crumb trees so I just uh, spray some hard beam of water onto the root let it dry and then it's just to start the creative process what I do first here is to uh, apply some wood glue PVA glue or Elmer construction that's uh, also called Ponal in Germany. Apply that on most of that branch looking root parts. Then I sprinkle in 12 millimeter brown static grass. 12 millimeter is half inch. And I do that pretty richly. So I get a good coverage of finer branches I leave that to dry and then I spray the branches only with spray glue and in that I sprinkle in 2.5 millimeter brown static grass as soon as you feel happy with that apply more spray glue and sprinkle in leaves I typically use no middle green leaves I place my raspberry root trees in places like this close to this waterfall yeah this trees definitely sticks out from the crowd then i got this uh, really cool post from a guy called magnus nordholm in sweden he's growing his own sea foam and uh, this little fella here is uh, uh, supervising the uh, plantations so here's uh, just a few weeks into um, this was this uh, spring and you see that they already have started to grow. Then they, uh, Magnus let them grow over summer. And here you see there are autumn leaves on the ground. This is somewhere in September. He harvested his sea foam. And well, it's uh, not all that much. But uh, hey, it's uh, really hardcore to grow your own seed foam. Sea foam, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, here's uh, one of the bushes. So go ahead and grow your own sea foam. Another material you can find richly in the garden and also in the surroundings is uh, spiria. I typically pick 100 or 200 flowers and the first action after that is to remove the leaves up in the flower then it will look something like this next action is to remove some of the lower branches and also cut the top away because it's uh, most often too pointy my intention here is to make a birch tree which you guys in the US call aspen the aspens looks white but they're actually not they're very light gray so we're gonna hit our tree with the light gray paint this is a water-based paint from liquitex which I really can recommend 
With the spray paint still wet, I sprinkle in tiles grout. The color of this tiles grout is light gray, almost white. This uh, light gray uh, tiles grout gives us a nice texture for the trunk, which is very close to what you see on a birch tree. Next thing is to hit the foliage with black. Now, important here is that the foliage is painted only black and not the trunk. And if possible, also try to avoid spray painting the branches with this black paint. I know it's very difficult, especially with these water-based paints because the pressure in the cans is pretty high. But uh, once you worked on it for a while, you get a hang of it. What I do then is to sprinkle in Woodland Scenic Fine Turf in the color green grass. And this will give us a nice foundation. Leave this to dry now properly and then add some spray glue on top of that uh, turf. And into this spray glue we're sprinkling noch leaves. This is uh, the middle green leaves I use for the aspens or the birch trees like this. And when you feel happy with the amount of leaves, you can uh, mist some more spray glue on top just to make sure nothing comes off. Let's do some detail painting on that trunk. For this I'm using uh, acrylic black and white paint. And I'm mixing these two to a dark gray shade. With this paint I'm basically just painting the branches. And that is only the lower branches. I'm also painting the trunk in a triangular pattern where the branches is extending from the trunk. And I'm also painting similar marks along the trunk where branches has been sitting. But fallen off and the result is a uh, kind of birch like or aspen like tree trunk like this. Once you get a hang on the process and make a few hundred at the time one of these trees take no more than one minute to complete so it's uh, really a mass production type tree with I think a very nice looking end result. But you can also make other trees from the same material, meaning this flower. And we're going to make a pine tree. This is a European or Eurasian type pine tree. Those trees typically don't have this opaque style foliage. So I'm cutting away some of the pieces of the flower here until I feel happy with the result. Yeah, like this. And then I'm spraying it with that same type of water-based acrylic paint. And into that wet brown paint I sprinkle coffee grounds. Coffee grounds, I, I do get a lot of this because I drink a lot of coffee. And uh, I only put this on into the oven for an hour at uh, 80 degrees to make it dry completely. And then I put it in cans like this. So what I do, I'm just uh, sprinkling that into the wet glue and mist new brown paint over. All right, so this is what our trunk will look like. Now let's work a bit on that foliage. We're gonna hit that first with the chromium oxide green. This is also a water-based spray paint from Liquitex. And into the wet paint we're gonna sprinkle Noch structural flock. This is a product they have in different colors and this is the middle green which matches the oxide green. The top part of the trunk of these uh, Eurasian pine trees is uh, kind of orange. I mix a portion of white and brown into that orange paint and then I get the paint which uh, quite closely matches the color of those trunks. And again, this is a very quick method of doing nice looking trees. No more than 50 seconds if you do about 100. Another very good material for miniature modeling is the bushes from Blueberry. 
In the summer they have leaves and berries like this, but in the autumn the leaves fall off. And that's when we pick our bushes. Now please check with your local authorities so it's okay to pick these bushes. I picked these on my, in my garden, so that should be okay. What I do is I cut pieces, which is, uh, has the right length and appearance from the bushes and then I add several of these together, typically two or three. What happens then is that the trunk gets too thick. So what you need to do is to grind away a portion of the trunk. I do that using a knife and then I glue the two trunk pieces together like this. However, the appearance of the trunk at this point is not so nice. So what we do, we're going to wind a few wounds of floral tape around the trunk. Floral tape can be bought in a DIY store or uh, in your flower shop. This uh, type of tape is not really sticky when you uh, get it like this until you extend it. So when you pull in it, it will get sticky. And you just wrap the trunk with that. Now, the stickiness of this tape uh, will not remain for long. So what we need to do is to seal the trunk using fast set glue. And did you know that fast set glue actually cures with the humidity in the room? So if you want to have a faster process, just breathe on it. Once dry, we can trim the foliage or the branches to the outline we desire. We're now gonna fix uh, smaller branches onto the branches we already have. Well, we can call it twigs and I fix them using construction glue. This is wood glue, PVA glue or ponal. And uh, in the Spanish spoken areas, it's called cola blanca. The finer branches or the twigs are made from sea cell rope. And uh, this is, can also be bought in your DIY store. And all you need to do is to cut away pieces from that rope and sprinkle into the wet glue. The advantage using sea salt fibers instead of static grass is that the sea salt fibers are not exactly straight and also the thickness between different fiber varies uh, slightly. So you get a kind of natural variance of the twigs in a foliage like this compared to static grass. However, for the finer twigs, I fix them using spray glue and it's a 2.5 millimeter static grass. Now I'm spraying the entire tree with the brown spray paint. This is also the water-based paint from Liquitex. And with that done, I mist black spray paint into the brown so I get a kind of wet mix and then it looks something like this. Whilst the spray still is wet I sprinkle in woodland scenic fine turf in the color weed and after that I top with some middle green leaves from Noch and the final result looks something like this. So not all that bad for only a few minutes of work. Another material I pick and collect in the autumn is uh, oak leaves. We get a lot of these uh, in my garden because we have a large oak or actually several of them. So I pick a number of leaves, put them in the oven for an hour at approximately 80 degrees Celsius. And when properly dry, I run them in the blender. After 20, 30 seconds like that, I have a brown powder with uh, some, also some structural flakes and stuff in. This is a very useful type of blend to apply under trees. 
and I typically apply this under all of the trees I have on my layout ahead of placing the tree itself and uh, we're gonna have a look at what it looks like here is a pine tree with oak leaves underneath and you see it's a, it's a kind of realistic look a kind of footprint on the ground that there is a tree over it. Yeah. So that's what I do in the autumns, collect and harvest uh, materials for the modeling during the winter period here. And uh, of course, um, you know, the species of, of plants and, and uh, different things he might vary. Uh, you might not have the same um, type of, of uh, bushes and things we have here. But this video might anyway give you uh, some inspiration of, of materials you can gather in the area where you live. Whatever you have available there. And make something similar or something completely different from but anyway it uh, kind of highlights that uh, the materials are out there <laughs> hey we're mid-december already and uh, this will be um, i will have a, a due to the circumstances here i will have a two weeks of quarantine and then i will go away and uh, visit uh, relatives um, so uh, i will be off uh, camera <laughs> for like four weeks and be back in January uh, and next year we're starting up with uh, building a, a, a model railroad a kind of beginners layout plus so it's a bit of a more of a than a beginners layout really uh, it it will allow you or the one who builds this layout to to explore model railroad as a hobby more than you know the standard beginners layouts that only does this <laughs> so we're starting with that that will be a series of tutorials um, with the start in january uh, and um, hopefully that will give you some inspiration as well to get started unless you haven't started yet this um, layout i'm, I'm building uh, is built on ikea tables so you can just pick the tables up they're available throughout the entire world and they're super low cost so just assemble the IKEA tables and then build the model railroad on top of that and it has a small footprint it's HO scale but you can still fit it in any you know bedroom or living room uh, so I think it's uh, it's uh, probably uh, a good fit for anyone who wants to get started with model railroading <laughs> All right, so more about that in January. Uh, until that, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.